Hey everybody, it's Mr. N, and this is the lesson on 1-2, on mathematical models. So a mathematical model is a description of real-world phenomenon, and it's used to understand phenomenon and make predictions. Most of the time, we want to make mathematical models so that we can make predictions. Uh, right now, you're on the news, it's all about that hurricane. If you see, there's multiple mathematical models of different paths it could take from different calculations. And then they converge it to see what, where it probably will go. Um, so that's in the current example of a mathematical model. Then we've got linear models, y equals mx plus b. You started doing those a long time ago. Uh, we've got an empirical model, which is no physical law. We just use the data. And then the example would be like a line of best fit. We've got polynomials. Um, that is the general, that P of X equation that you see is the generalization of a polynomial. This should say P of X equals, let's fix that right here. So that should say P of X equals. And the degree would be the highest power of X, quadratic would be X squared, cubic would be X cubed. So none of this is new to you. Again, a polynomial, suppose I had f of x equaling 2 thirds x to the fifth plus 5x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, something like that. Well, the degree on this would be fifth order. So right there, it's the highest power. Then we've got power functions. f of x equals x to the a. If a equals 1 over n, we will call this a root function. If a equals negative 1, this is called a reciprocal function. And then we've got rational functions. <clears throat> rational functions are f of x equals p of x over q of x. And what this is is just basically one polynomial over another. So p of x and q of x are both polynomials. Algebraic functions, if it can be constructed using a plus, a minus, division, multiplication, then we can call it algebraic function. So here's our example. Um, we've got f of x equaling the square root of x squared plus 1, f of x equaling x squared plus 5 over 2x plus 5 plus the quantity x minus 1 times the cube root of x. So those are algebraic functions because I've expressed them using addition, subtraction. Trig functions would be sine, cosine, tangent, and so on. And then in calculus, we use radians, unless otherwise noted. But we always stick with radians. So on your calculators, they always better be in radians. Always. Unless the problem says degrees. If it says degrees in it, then change it. Otherwise, if it doesn't say anything or nothing is stated, we are always in radians. Do you remember what a radian is? Let me review with you real quick what a radian is. So we had the 360, and we've talked about why 360 is in a circle, where that number came from, possibly, and how that number is very arbitrary. Well, mathematicians didn't like that being arbitrary, so they said, okay, so if I have a circle, I'll just put it on a grid here, and this is my radius right there. Well, that's going to be my radius as well. Whatever that distance is right here, this angle that's formed, that distance so that that's R. So you've got R as each of the sides of the sector and R as the arc length of that sector. Well, this would be one radian. And how many of these would it take to go all the way around? It would take two pi radians to go all the way around. Wow. Look at that number. So convenient, because the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. It works perfectly. So that's why mathematicians like this instead of degrees. So we will stick with radians. OK, now, let's see. Let's move this up. OK, an exponential function. We've got f of x equals a to the x power. Examples would be 2 to the x, 1 half to the x. Logarithmic functions, f of x equals log base b of x. 
And then transcendental functions are functions that are not algebraic. These are trig functions, inverse trig, exponential, and logarithmic. All right, so that's pretty much the notes today. The notes is pretty straightforward. There's nothing complicated. It's just reminding you what functions are. Now, I'm going to post up on the, uh, in the notes on the website the 12 basic functions graphically. Okay, so we've got 12 basic functions, and these will include the identity function, the squaring function. The squaring function is just like x squared. So these are what you have learned in the past as like your parent graphs. So I will post this worksheet up on the website of the notes. And basically, you just take those basic ones, and then you can shift them up, down, flip them, whatever. Okay, so we translate, rotate, do what we need to out of those 12 basic functions. So that worksheet will be up on the website just for you, for your reference. Okay? All right, let's take a look at these real fast and do these uh, examples. We are going to skip number five. We're going to skip that example today, but we're going to do the rest of them. All right, for the first one, we need to classify these functions. What is this first function? What is it? It's what? Exponential. So in your homework, you're going to be doing a lot of this, just classifying the functions, graphing a few things. Not a lot of, shouldn't be that bad. All right, what about x to the seventh? What is this? It's just a polynomial, right? Okay, and then the next one. What is this function? Is this a rational function? Look at our notes. Is this a rational function? Uh, what's the condition on rational functions? It's got to be what? They got to be polynomials. Is that bottom, the denominator, is that a polynomial? No. So what's the best we can conclude at, as this being? It's what? Algebraic. Very good. Okay. The next one is a? Polynomial. All right. Find the expression for the quadratic if f of 1 equals 8, f of negative 1 equals 12, f of 2 equals f of negative 3, which equals 0. Okay, so we could tackle this a couple different ways. One way that I just heard right now from someone was, since these two, we know it's a quadratic, right here, tells us it's a quadratic. And we know f of 2 equals f of negative 3, which equals 0. So if I look at this graphically, when I put in 2 or negative 3, I get a 0 out of that. So we know that we could say y equals a times x minus 2, x plus 3. And then we can use this point, one of these two points, to solve for the a. Plug in the x and y value. Solve for the A. There you go. Another way, since you guys have your calculators, is to use your regression features. Now, the reason why I say this is I haven't tested out these two points to see if they give me the same A value. So these could, it could be like a line of best fit, and this is a parabola of best fit. It could be that situation. If you test out these two points, and you get two different A values, then you're going to have to do a regression model. Okay? So here is what we can do if we have to do the regression model. We're going to go stat on our calculators, edit, and then under L1 and L2, oops, okay, under L1, Do a different color here. Under L1 and L2, this is going to be your x and y values. Well, what are the x and y values? When I put in 1, I get 8. When I put in negative 1, I get 12. When I put in 
2, I get 0. And when I put in negative 3, I also get 0. So you could do it that route. After you do that, you're going to quit out of there. So this, and then put in the points. And then you quit out of that menu. And then you're going to go stat again. This time we're going to put calculate. Stat and then calculate. And then choose the option for quadratic regression. And it should give you an answer. And the answer will be for this problem, y equals negative 2x squared minus 2x plus 12. Okay, so we talked about two different ways of solving this. All right, again, these notes were quick today. Um, hopefully uh, this made sense, and let me know if you have questions on the homework.